five, four, three, two, one, zero. Okay, so hello everybody. Welcome to Crypto Fight Club. Here is with me, George, Tech Lead. We are joined by Felix CTO again. We are trying to do an AMA on Telegram. So please bear with us. And hello, Felix. Hello, George. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so Felix, in your name, it now mentions that you are the CTO and people do not need to contact you with marketing proposals. So I've had you a few times with me. I've never actually asked you what do you do as our CTO? As our CTO, I am handling everything that is related to the tech side. So it started off with basically writing the white paper um, with all the complicated math equations that are basically going into the staking. That was all done by me. And then we basically are working together with a team of very talented designers, game developers, blockchain developers, as well as front and back end people. Okay, fantastic. Sounds very technical indeed. Great to have you doing all that for us. So I don't need to. <laughs> so Felix, we've had a few big events so far in the last four days, I want to say it has been. So first we had our Game Starter IGO. Um, would you like to expand on how that went for Crypto Fight Club for us all? The Game Starter IGO, so because we are a Game Starter original and we're working very closely with them together and sharing a lot of resources, um, it went quite well. I think we pitched the idea to Game Starter initially about two months ago, three months ago. Um, Andreas from Game Starter, he loved it and he was like, well, we should definitely do this. And now we're here. Uh, the Game Starter IGO in general, it went very well. We sold out, I think, 90% in the time span of 24 minutes, 24 hours. And then within the last four minutes, I believe we sold out the remaining 10%. And yeah, we had, I think, 750 participants coming from GameStarter. Fantastic. So that isn't a bad time at all. 750 people holding fight thanks to GameStarter as well. Uh, we obviously did not only do GameStarter, though, Felix, did we? We also did a Polka Starter. We did an IDO with them the day after. So same question. How did our Pokestarter IDO go? Our Pokestarter IDO went even better than our Gangstarter IDO. We actually sold out as well in about, I think, four to five minutes there. Fully sold out. We were 16x oversubscribed, which was quite amazing. And fun fact, I think we had about 16,000 people applying and only 1,000 people getting in. So it was as hard getting into the Pokestarter IDO as it is getting into Harvard. <laughs> fantastic that's a pretty good stat to know that it was difficult but then people did manage to snap up some fight within the first four minutes if they were fast and lucky yeah. so felix we've talked about our two launches we've had already um we've also gone over to pancake swap where people can be buying and selling all of our token hopefully you are buying and holding in preparation for some upcoming events but what are you currently working on at this moment, Felix? So right now, the main focus is to basically get the staking dashboard. So I don't want to say getting it ready because it has been ready for a while since we got everything audited on the smart contract side. So the smart contracts are there. Um, everything works out nicely. The front end is something that we're working on right now where we need to fix two small design bugs. And then we are ready to go and have the NFTs ready for you guys on the 26th of December. Okay, fantastic. So you mentioned there that these are just small tweaks of bugs. As for anyone that has missed the video, we have already had our Hacken audit. So could you just give us a, another brief update on that for anyone that had, didn't manage to see one of our videos about how Hacken and our audit of all six contracts went? Um, so the way we did it is we had um, the unit testing and then we had the testnet testing. And once you're done with testnet and you make sure that everything worked properly, we basically submitted it to Hacken. And then Hacken came back after about more than a week, I think. And they basically are categorizing your code into different categories of severity. So you have critical, high, medium, and low. All our issues that were found were low and mostly related to gas optimization within the smart contract. And it was quite easy to fix. Like the fixes were done in about two hours. Uh, we sent it back to Hacken. We finally got our full report back. 
and we basically fixed all the issues that were issues in the sense that there weren't security issues, but there were um, gas optimization issues, double negatives. And if you want to actually learn everything like about it, we had an awesome Ask Me audit with George on YouTube. You can go check that out. But yeah, it's fully audited. Um, that has been ready. And we have been working for the last month on the front end uh, for users to basically interact directly with the smart contracts and being able to stake. Fantastic. Okay. Yeah. Like Felix mentioned there, we have done a video for YouTube of Ask Me Audit where you can go and watch and have a brief, well, a slightly longer version than that for what happened with our hack and audit. But I do recommend all of you go to the hack and website and follow the link that is connected to that video and read the audit yourself if you're truly interested in how our audits went with all six of our contracts as like always said it is very important to do your own research never just take someone's word for it on the internet so it is there you can go and utilize that information for yourself as well uh so felix you mentioned that the nft sale is coming up can you just go over when the nft sale is and how it is likely to run for us so we will have the NFT sale on the 26th of December, which is in about five days. Um, our NFT sale is not really an NFT sale because we're not making any money on the NFTs. The way it actually works is, and this is quite innovative, and this is something that we're very proud of with the design, is that a user has to go to our front interface or build their own front interface if they're able to and interact with our smart contract. So a user will come using their non-custodian wallet, in our case, MetaMask, and directly interact with a smart contract, signing a transaction that the user wants to burn 2,000 fights and mint their own NFT fighter at random. So that's the only way people will actually be able to obtain the fighters. And the price for it is going to be 2,000 fight tokens. Okay, that sounds very interesting and not something I have heard before. So like Felix said there, just covering again in my short snippets of what I took away from you saying there, Felix, 2000 fight is going to get you an NFT fighter. We don't make any money off of you buying the fighter. That 2000 fight is sent to the black hole address and taken out of the ecosystem. Uh, you also get to mint the fighter yourself from a mystery pack. We do have some information coming out as well about these packs and how they're going to run. But in brief, just remember the days when you were young, if you're as old as I am, when you'd open a Pokemon pack and you'd take it out and see what was inside, whether it was common or a shiny rare. That's the type of system we will be running with our mystery boxes. So, uh, Felix, I have another question for you. I believe this is our last fixed question. So we're going to be doing NFTs. NFTs are massive in the industry at the moment, but mainly NFTs are normally just the pictures, the art form. They don't really serve too much utility. What would you say to anybody that is uh, against or dubious about buying NFTs because they only hold a value while someone finds it that it should hold a value without its utility. What makes our fighter NFTs different to, say, a picture of a bored-looking ape? Um, I think the key word that people would be looking for in this case is NFT 2.0. So that's definitely something that we're promoting. It's not just about the art that we have created, the OBJ files, the rendering, and these little cute bubble heads that you can fight. It's about having uniqueness. And uniqueness is not just by looking at something, but being part of something special. So with us, it's users mint their own NFT. And only if you have an NFT, you'd be able to participate in a reward pool. So what we have basically done is we have combined an NFT smart contract together with a staking contract. That means that users are able to stake inside of their NFT instead of running it on a separate LP campaign or instead of running it through another DeFi protocol. So once you're staking, Inside of your NFT, you will be rewarded with an APY. Now, if you have locked your tokens for too long and you don't want to emergency unstake, it is an NFT and it can be traded on the open market. So you can just sell your NFT, your crypto fighter, with the underlying principle and the claim for future interest on the NFT market to somebody else. So it's not just a piece of art, but it's also the, the tokens and the future claim for future interest that's locked inside of the NFT and that's made transferable. 
Um, I come actually from a background also in the banking world, and that would be w w what you would call it is basically a certificate of deposit. It's quite nice. <laughs> Okay, fantastic. So it looks like that even just the initial NFTs we launch, I know we've got other stuff planned in the future, but we'll touch on that closer to the time of the wearables and such. But just having an NFT that will only cost you 2000 fight, um, you can then use that to stake your 2000 fight with the unique mechanic of being able to if you need to finish your stake, you don't have to unstake and take your penalty. You can just sell the whole NFT, including its stake, to someone else. Uh, I believe I've explained that correctly there, Felix? That is correct. Um, Perfect. But what awesome. you could explain us is how does the reward pool work and why do we have one? Okay, so how does the reward work pool work? <laughs> so CFC and Fight Tokens are working on an inflationary model. The reason for that is you need to reward stakers, right? So how do you reward stakers if you basically have something that's not inflationary? Um, if you're looking at something like Bitcoin, Bitcoin is not very suited to be to have a lot of velocity. It's something that's designed to have to be a store of value and to basically you buy your Bitcoins to sit on it. So if you want something that flows more freely through the system, you need some form of incentive, some form of inflation. That's basically what it is. That's how the fundamentals of money work. Like governments print money and then it keeps on running like it keeps on circulating so cfc is designed in a similar way but in our case it's basically that we have an inflation pool of 10 million tokens that are minted every year and basically are going into the reward pool the reward pool is basically divided into two contracts one of the contracts is for people who stake fight so if you stake fight 30 percent of the 10 million tokens that we're minting each year are going into that contract and you as a staker will basically be rewarded from that pool. There's, it is important how much you stake and how long you stake because we have, the more you obviously take from the pool, the more you're getting back in return. And the longer you're staking, the better your bonus is going to be. So the bonus starts with one year and the maximum bonus is five years, which would be up to 100% bonus. The second pool that we're having and which is something that we're very proud is the LP staking pool. So users can basically go, they buy their NFT, they go on Pancake, they provide liquidity to the pair of Fight and BUSD, and in return, they are getting their LP token. Now users can go and stake that LP token inside of their fighter. This means that they're getting a 2.3x APY higher than those people who are staking Fight. And for us as a project, it's really great because over time, liquidity will increase more and more, making it a very, very sustainable project um, uh, over time, actually. It's like for long livability of a project, it's something important, the liquidity. Fantastic. So, yeah, that sounds something that we haven't seen or haven't seen a lot in the space as well. And it seems like a good way to, to me anyway of how you can make sure you're going to be getting something back in return. So that is all of our fixed questions so far then, Felix. So we're going to dive into the chat and take some from there. I've already spotted one question that relates to what we're already talking about, Felix. So the first question is from uh, Javier BSTS. Apologies if I butcher anybody's name. I'm very sorry. <laughs> and the question will be, will the sale of the NFTs have exclusivity with any exchange? Um, no, actually not. So it will be done through our website um, where people can go directly on Crypto Fight Club and connect their MetaMask and then basically burn their 2000 Fight tokens directly interacting with the smart contract and mint their own fighter at random. And then they will also see basically what fighter they've gotten and the rarity of the fighter. There's no limit to how many... Um, fighters can be minted per user we have blocked off all on-chain bots but we can't block the off-chain bots because that's just not possible because they're off-chain okay fantastic okay that was a good question there javier uh the next question i'm going to pick is from someone who's asked a lot of questions um min an uh some of your questions have been answered already but i just want to focus on this one here that you asked again we did just touch on it but i know it's something people really need to make sure they have the faith in the project when it comes to again very sorry i'm 100 percent certain <laughs> i pronounced your name wrong 
Um, but it is just touching again on how will the project protect users if the project is attacked by hackers? Has your project been audited? So I know we've mentioned already that we have been audited for six contracts by um, Hacken. Link is in a video on our YouTube. But can you explain any more about this that would give the peace of mind to people that might have the similar thought? So there is a couple of things that you do. We obviously had the audit. We obviously mentioned it. I'm not going to go over it. If you want to read it, it's officially available on the Hacken website. Um, you can find it under the audit reports of CFC. But there is a couple of additional steps that you can basically take. And one step would be to not use custodian wallets. So a lot of exchanges are getting hacked because they're just pooling together funds. In our case, it is basically just MetaMask. You hold your own keys. It's your own coins. It's your own NFT. And we don't hold any control. So that's also providing more security basically to the user. Um, we have done another couple of things to basically block out certain things that are very used by hackers. And I won't go too much into the details now, um, but what I will tell you is that we are going to be using an MIT license and we will be publishing our code for everybody to see, to review. Um, if the community wants to take a look and they found any bugs within it, perfect. Anything that Hacken has overlooked, great for us. And if anybody wants to be a copycat and copy our code, they're more than welcome. It's an MIT license. I think this is innovative and I think that what we're doing is something that hasn't been done before in a space that moves very rapidly. And I think people will come out and try to be the crypto fight club killer and try to invade us. Fantastic. That's what I like to hear, making sure that people are coming to try and take on us because we're going to be successful. So, yeah, that was a fantastic yeah. question there. Um, Minan, I can see you're here listening. So I hope that answers your question. Um, okay, let's jump into our next one. Uh, this is from someone who's very active in the chat. Uh, I am going to get your name wrong. So, <laughs> Del Krish. Don't think I got it too wrong. Um, his question or her question, their question. What is your top three things for priorities in 2022? Could you share some plans for the upcoming year? Good question. So we have been crushing it in 2021 and we will continue crushing it next year. So we're working with extremely tight deadlines. A lot of projects will basically finish their fundraising. They have these like four month cliffs of basically not delivering anything. So we had our fundraising on the 17th and on the 26th, we're already releasing the NFTs, but we're not just releasing the NFTs. We're also releasing the staking mechanics which are fully audited by Hacken, as we mentioned now again, <laughs> very important. <laughs> so that is already one use case for fight. And we're going to continue pushing use cases for fight in that direction. The first mini game, we have been working on it for about a month right now. It is pretty much done. I think, George, if you want to show your link, YouTube, you have done a video about it. We'll change the design a little bit. But overall, the game design is done. And the first mini game will come out very early in Q1 next year. Um, where we're also going to be starting and emphasizing the play-to-earn aspect. So you have your fighter, you can stake inside your fighter, and you can battle your fighter. And because we want to keep the community engaged and fun, and you know that you guys always want something new, I want to release a new minigame every three weeks for you guys until we are actually able to have the PvP game ready. So the PvP game, we have been working on it for about one and a half months now, and we have about three devs just working on that. So that is actually the hardest part to deliver, but until that is ready, you will get a new mini game every three weeks. Fantastic. Um, with these mini games, can we just clarify, are they gonna be earning while playing these mini games, or is the only way to earn when mini games are available is when they have staked inside the NFT? I know this is a common question I have also been asked in the chat already. So, you don't need to stake inside of your NFT in order to play any of the games. Um, the staking will become more relevant once the PvP game is out. Because if you're staking for a minimum of one year and you're staking the right amount, then that means that your fighter will evolve at a maximum of 20% in statistical value over the course of a year. So you will be better in the ring at competing with other people, especially if you're already holding a very rare fighter, it's going to be even better. Um, overall, you do not need to stake. We obviously don't force any user to stake. 
um, they can just play the game. They're just not going to be as good in the game. Um, for the mini game, staking is not going to be that relevant, but we want to incentivize people that start early and get in early on this. Okay, fantastic. Good to hear. That moves us very nicely on to our next question. Uh, someone's name that I recognize from making the chat winner videos for Discord. Uh, we have PP Lima. <laughs> um, and their first question you've basically just answered of what is the max capacity of an NFT? If I am staking a lot of fight, their skills will increase. But what is the ceiling? Um, I'm just going to pin on a little bit from one of his other four questions there because I feel it it like really goes well with that. Can there be an invincible NFT if you stake for long enough or enough? Uh, no, obviously there needs to be a ceiling because otherwise uh, you are here since day one and you're just annihilating everybody who comes after you. Um, there is a ceiling. The max ceiling in attack and defense is 120 and the max ceiling in technique is going to be 80. The staking duration for that is going to be quite long. Uh, for the rare fighters, it is going to be acceptably long, and for other stakers, it's going to be very long. <laughs> so we want to have this proof of weight concept and eliminating the the instant gratification that's around in crypto. Like, be around for longer, be around from the first movers, and move with us together as a company. Um, in addition to that, also we have multiple stages. So in a game, you always need an outcome between randomness and certainty. So the game, especially the PvP game, is going to feature these elements where certain outcomes can't be determined by the user, but they're just random. Uh, just to name a few, for example, the NFTs that we're having are divided into MMA, boxing, and Muay Thai. That is going to play a role in the PvP game of which fighter you have and who you're playing against with. Um, another example I could say is, for example, technique. Technique is something that increases your chance of having a critical hit, but it also increases your chance of dodging the hit of the opponent. So there is the chance of basically critting, normal hitting, or just completely missing it. <laughs> okay. Crit, hit, or whiff. Fantastic. Yes. Sounds perfect. <laughs> so I hope that answers your question, uh, PB. Um, yeah, so I like the idea of that, having a ceiling. Definitely feel that is something that is required in these type of games, especially if you can put money forwards to make the thing you are playing with better, as that really apes into the idea of pay to win instead of play to earn. So having a ceiling that isn't ridiculously high and does make you still beatable, fantastic in my opinion, and I hope that really answered your question well. Um, the next question we have is from one of the OGs, I believe also has won the chat at some point, um, is from Eddie. Didn't get that name wrong. Pretty easy name. Thank you, Eddie, for having a simple name for me. Um, almost 83% investors now think only of profit, but ignore the long term benefits. So can you give them some reasons why they should buy and hold fight tokens in the long run, disregarding the game itself, if possible? Now, I think that would come back to the point of having a currency that's a little bit inflationary um, and having velocity to it. So you put use cases to it, that's fine. But if things are not moving within the ecosystem, then obviously it's just going to get stuck around and it's becoming like Bitcoin. It's just expensive. It's slow. I, I, I don't want to trash talk Bitcoin. Like I've been in this space since I think 2013. Uh, love Bitcoin. Um, still love it the most. Um, but... You, in order to be something like money, it needs to be a bit quicker. In terms of investors, yeah, you have the speculators, you have the VCs, you have everybody, but that's also where you pick your battle. Like, pick the right people that invest in your project. If you have seen our website, we have extremely strong partners, um, very strong diamond hands that are basically not just there to, to have a quick cash grab. They're there to long-term support the project. They have helped us out a lot um, over the last couple of months. And they're continuing to do so. We have a lot of support for them. And if everybody is basically in it together and within the, let's say, the, the magic carpet, right, um, it's going to go well. Like once you have greedy people entering the system or you're allowing people that are greedy to enter the system and ruin it, then um, that's, the, that's where you fuck up. 
<laughs> Fantastic. Good answer there, Felix. I hope that answers your question there, Eddie. Thank you for a great question. OK, the next question, I believe we've slightly touched on in the last two, but it's kind of worded different. I feel it's going to give us the same answer, but I think it is something that's good to clear up. Um, it's from Sergi. Having so many great product projects outside NFTs, play to earn, etc. What are your long term plans? I really want to earn money with this game for the next three to five years. Do you think that could be possible, Felix? Yes, it is. And the reason why is, again, we are not relying on a token buyback on a burning mechanism. The APY staking mechanism is something that is going to be there and is go always going to be there because it's an inflation pool that's defined on, on, a, on a timeline. And every year there's new tokens that are minted. They go into the reward pool. Whoever is staking in the reward pool is going to get rewarded. So that is one way of basically ensuring that this is going to be a long-term project. The other thing that we can also do is we can basically release more and more games. It's, it's not just limited to one game. So like I said, we got planning to do the um, little mini games that are coming out in regular intervals for people to have the play to earn aspect. But really, we want to hammer down in the PvP environment. We want to have something that is something that's unique, something that has features from Axie, because what I've done is a very, very fantastic job. And there's also like other couple of, of NFT games that are doing a really good job. And we have looked for them. And when we came up with the idea, we were like, okay, this is cool. We want this in our project as well. <laughs> well, fantastic answer there, Felix, for Sergey. I hope. And it brings us perfectly onto my next question that I selected as well, as if it was pre-planned. So this <laughs> is from Always Heartbroken. I hope your Aww. username is not true but at least I could pronounce it correctly. What are your favorite NFT projects right now and why? My favorite NFT projects. Um, so I actually met the team of Axie in 2018 um, when they were very small. And that's when I actually found out about Axie and really liked the idea. NFTs were nothing back then. It was all about um, still like uh, ERC-20s and just ICOs. And these guys came up with the crazy idea of doing NFTs. Um, I think there is a reason why they just cracked, um, I think it was a billion US dollars in turnarounds on their NFT marketplace. It's just because it's well designed. It's cute. The UX UI is great. These characters, there's a lot of layers to it. So I would definitely say that that is one of my favorite ones. Um, I know the guys over at Avogachi. Um, also very cool. Very cool design. Very innovative. Combining an NFT with the Aave protocol. Um, also something that we've taken some inspiration from, but we didn't want to interact with a third party smart contract. We wanted to have our own. So we created our own reward pool. Fantastic. Yeah. I would also like to add in there. Uh, my main experience has been with Axie. I have also tried, uh, gods unchained. Didn't like it. It was too similar to Hearthstone for me. And my, uh, my smooth brain could not deal with the amount of cards that I needed to try and remember. <laughs> um, I've also tried Than Thanam Arena as well. Um, and got bug glitched out before I even got into my first game and gave up. <laughs> but yeah, um, I definitely agree with Felix uh, with the way that Axie has done things certainly is good. There is definitely things we have improved on from the Axie model, in my personal opinion. Uh, for anyone that is doing Axie at the moment, you know that SLP will always be an issue um, until they come up with a burning mechanism, which fight already will have and a staking mechanism as well. So that's good news. Um, okay, so let's move on to another question. We'll probably take maybe three or four more. Um, so I am very sorry. I am not going to get your name right. Um, Sarish Anasuri, 44. I got the number right at the end. So hopefully you are in here and are aware that I'm speaking about you. <laughs> um, I, I am a fighting games lover. Can we expect the game with quality of fighting skills or is it only going to consist of strategy? That's an excellent question, actually, um, because we want to have multiple layers to it. So strategy is going to be a very important aspect when it comes to the PvP uh, environment. So the mini games are more like luck and randomness, I would say, instead of skills. Like, obviously, if you're skilled and you're doing it much more, you will be better, but there is a limit to it. Then we're going to 
extend on that part when it comes to PvP. PvP is going to be much more in-depth and much more complex. Like, I like the Axie model where people can predict, they can plan, they can map out the strategy, they can build a deck, they can really, like, hammer down on their team and really improve on their strategy. And there, there's skill to it. Like, you can be a really good Axie player. Obviously, you need to have also the right characters. Otherwise, it's, it gets a bit hard, by the way, from my own experience. <laughs> And then when it comes to going outside of strategy, when it comes to things like roaming around a free world, having this really like PVE environments, where you're able to train your character, uh, walk around, interact with other players, um, battle each other in the arenas, that is something that we do have planned. That is the PVE game that we will release after the PvP game, but for now we're very focused on the PvE. Fantastic. Well, I hope that answers your question. Um, I think that it will definitely have other things as well as the fighting skills, as well as just being strategy. I feel there'll be definitely something in there for anyone that does just appreciate the old style games of fighting games um, before they came into this new age of a lot seeming to be built behind card game ideas, as well as just the button mash of trying to make sure you are beating someone at Tekken. Um, <laughs> so we've got another question. I have been trying to select just one question from each person. Unfortunately, uh, Minan has asked another fantastic question. So we're going to be answering <laughs> a second question from them. Um, I think this is a very good question. And I think it is definitely something we may not have covered as much as we could have. Um, I know the information is out there, but this is a great opportunity to give it to everybody as well. Um, why did you choose the image of the NFTs in this game to be similar to Minecraft? How does the project manage copyright issues of its NFT characters? So that question was actually taken from the last AMA I just had an hour ago. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> it is a good question, though, uh, Nina. Um, so Minecraft characters are cool, but they are much more, I would say, flat and less rendered. So our characters are in the direction of a bubble head and also voxel style, I would say. It's a mixture of pixel and voxel style. So Minecraft is mostly just pixels. Um, we haven't taken any um, any we haven't taken any ideas directly from Minecraft. It was just something that came up during the design process. So these are uniquely created from scratch. We really like them and we want something that's that's recognizable. Like a lot of people just go in they buy something from the Unity store, they go into the Unreal Engine store, and they start modifying templates. We're like, we don't want that. Like, there's so many projects out there doing that. We wanted to build something from scratch. We have a design team of now, what, like four people, George? Just designing these characters and rendering them and animating them. Maybe more. <laughs> yeah, it's getting more by the day. And it's, it's worth it. Like, you want to create something as unique. You want to create something as very recognizable. And you're not going to get that by just copying a template from a store. Fantastic. And the second part was to do with the copyright issues of our fighter. Copyright issues. So we have created them from scratch. They're pixelated characters. Um, it's unique pieces of art. We have not taken it from any other game. Uh, these are not real characters. They're not meant to represent any real person in the world. Um, but nonetheless, they're supposed to be human-like. They're supposed to be something that is looking like an actual person, but with an oversized pixelated head. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, that main part there at the end was what I was looking for. Of Obviously, our characters are not based off of real people. If you believe they look like someone you know, that's up to you. That is definitely your opinion. But from our side, we have just tried to make some fighters that look like they're going to be able to kick ass. Okay, so let's move on to the next question. I believe we'll do two more after this one. So if you have any questions, get them in now. I'll scroll all the way to the bottom to pick the next two to make sure I don't miss anybody that is just getting into a question now. Um, so this question is going to be from uh, Muhammad Faith. At the moment, where are you focusing right now? Building and developing the product or getting customers and users or partnerships? Right now, it's all of it, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> we, like right now, it is literally all of it. So the team has been expanding massively over the last month or two. And it's it's everything. So we have everything going on from 
developing the mini game that is one developer then we have three developers on the pvp game we have more than four designers designing new characters and coming up with cool things we have Alan, who's leading graphic design, not only on the staking dashboard, but also on the website and also a lot of the game aspects. We have me, myself, and another blockchain dev working on the staking and making sure everything works there. And then obviously, we also need to integrate that within the mini games. We need the SDKs ready. And we also need marketing. So we got Ashton, we got you guys, we got Zach. Um, helping out a lot of marketing and we'll have a big push because i mean the nft launch is on the 26th and we definitely want to get as much people in it as possible so you will see a lot of publications are coming out we've been pushing the last one was like news BTC, i think that we've pushed out mm, um I think so. yeah and that, that's just going to keep coming more publications more pr um some advertising banners and just push everything on all fronts we're not just focusing on one thing we're focusing on the all Fantastic answer. Yeah, I would completely agree with that answer from Felix there as well, Mohammed. Um, at this stage, when we have another launch coming up and we're only three days off of our IDO and IGO, we are kind of very busy with every single app set right now without having to focus just on one. <laughs> but fantastic a good, question. A, a good question I would have, though, is like, what have we not been focusing on, which we <laughs> should have been focusing on in the last couple of months or yeah. weeks? Actually. I assume it would have been a shorter answer as well. <laughs> um, I can answer that, actually. So we went to the World Boxing Championship, and we actually have CFC gear. So I don't know if you have guys been long enough around, but we have actually handed out boxing gloves, shin pads, and I think training belts as well. And what we're going to do is actually now that we have the design final, start mass producing these items and actually supplying them to different gyms and different national teams around the world. So what you're going to see is a lot of big names within the industry who are going to start promoting us and also start training with our gear. But that we have been lacking because we were just too busy. <laughs> but we'll pick it back <laughs> up next year. <laughs> Fantastic answer there as well. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, I'm just picking some questions here. I'm sending through, and I'm I'm just going to pick two of them, maybe three, because yeah, I think we're going to go for three because I've just seen a third one that I really liked as well. So we've got three more questions, guys. Um, if you answer a question now, unfortunately, we're going to run out of time, so I won't be able to get to it. Um, apologies, but someone was likely to answer you in chat. If we haven't already covered it in this AMA, which, like I said before, this will be going up onto our YouTube, Facebook and socials as well. So if you have joined late, this will go up. So all the information will still be available to all of you. Um, OK, so I've got three more questions and let's go to uh, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> Tor oh, no, it's Tortuga, right? Tortuga, as in the, the Pirate Bay, hopefully, unless I am reading this incorrect um, uh, the question is slightly worded strange but there is a maximum of nfts per wallet so i assume he means is there a maximum amount of nfts that each wallet can hold um no there is no maximum amount of because we are not controlling your wallet so your wallet is a non-custodian wallet so we don't have any access we don't have any admin keys over them so whatever nfts you're holding they are yours but just to add to that, the smart contract is basically designed to work in batches. So the first batch of NFTs is going to be 5,000 NFTs at the price of 2,000 fight per NFT. Now, what happens if fight was to go to $10 and all of a sudden an NFT would cost now 20,000 US dollars? Now, that would be obviously a big problem. So we have kept that in mind and we're keeping the price of NFTs dynamic. So that means for the first batch, it is fixed to 2000 But for the next batch, it might be 5000 um, at a different fight price, depending on the market price. So we definitely want to keep it fair for everybody. We don't want to run into a situation like Axie, where it is just way too expensive for people to get into the game at some point, because you will stop losing new customers because they just can't afford it. The minimum to get into Axie right now is, I think, 1500 and then it goes all the way up to 10000 50000 Yes, those if you want to get into it a professional level. So we're definitely keeping all of that in mind. Yeah. Fantastic. So I hope that answered your question there, Tortuga. Um, yeah. So like you mentioned there, there is no limit. You can buy them all if you have enough money, I guess. 
<laughs> so our next question is going to be from Uchi. Uchi. Uh, apologies again, not fantastic with names. Hi, how many fighters can be played in one day? Is there an energy system for them? So I think this ties very nicely into the amount of fighters you can hold. Is there an amount you can fight your fighter within a day? I assume this is going to be relating to PvP and the mini games. if you are able to earn from the mini games, That is an excellent question, and we have designed it in a way to make it as realistic as possible. If you're a fighter, you can't have 50 fights a day. Your fighter gets tired, they get injured, they basically wear out, and you might need to give them some juice to get them going again. Like, who knows? Um, but what we're basically doing, yes, there is a limit of how many games you can basically play in a day before, you you, before your fighter basically wears out, and then it can't be used and you need to wait for a certain amount of time. Okay, fantastic. So a stamina mechanic, you're not going to go through 100 fights in a day, guys. We're trying to keep it mildly realistic, but allow you to be able to play enough fights a day so you can earn some money and enjoy yourself while playing the game, um, I feel is the main balance we are aiming for with what Felix just explained there. Um, so this is going to be our final question, guys. Um, again, it is from Sergi. Um, apologies if you have asked a question and we haven't picked it and we've double picked some. It's just I have gone for the ones that mainly caught my eye. So sorry if yours did not get answered. So Sergi asked, Ashton said you were doing a lot of great things in Asia, but do we have any plans for the Americas, the US, Mexico and South America? So according to the demographics and the data we have on hand right now, the majority of customers or the majority of you guys that are following us are based in Asia or around Europe. So that is mainly our focus right now. Now, what I mentioned before, we will have physical merchandise and we'll start sponsoring teams around the world. And then we'll also try to expand. We have some very interesting uh, investors actually that have very interesting contacts within different fields be it sports entertainment, be it uh, racing, be it other things. So we definitely want to expand the ecosystem. I mean, we've just started out. The IDO ended on the 17th. Um, we're now heavily working on just delivering product because I believe it's a product-driven market. So that's the main focus. But then next thing, definitely expanding the ecosystem is, is very high on the list, yeah. Yeah, fantastic answer there from Felix as well. Um, I would like to just add on to that. I'm aware for the South Americas, that is also big with such games as Axie Infinity um, in these low income countries. And it makes it such an easy way for some people to be able to support themselves and their families. So I know it is something we are hoping that we'll breach into as well. Just as Felix mentioned, the current data is showing that we are looking at Asia and Europe is our main people that are interested in the project. Okay, so unfortunately, guys, that is all the time we have got for now, but we will be doing hopefully weekly chats like this. If you have enjoyed this and this is something you would like to see at least once a week where you can keep up to date with how the project is going and ask any burning questions you have, please let us know in either the Telegram chat or by going over to any of our social medias and commenting there. It really helps us to promote and get ourselves out there so more people can know about this great project. Um, so, yeah, Felix, uh, thank you for coming today. I hope you've had a good time. Do you have any last words for the people in our community? Um, yeah, I really liked it. This was fun. I think this was some great questions. Um, should we give away a thousand fight? Should we give away a thousand fight right now? Why not? Yeah, why not? Let's do it right now. Sure. Okay. How do you want to give away a thousand fight, Felix? Uh, you can pick a question. You're very good at picking the questions, and then that person will be selected and we'll give them a thousand fight. Okay, so let's see. See if there's any we've not asked already, and we'll give one random question a thousand fight. Okay. Do, do, do. Oh. Okay, so it looks like this is a good question. Okay, um, I think we've touched on it already, but it is again, it is from uh, do, 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 Yuchi. This is a great question, and it relates to fight, so I feel it is certainly fitting. The stats of my fighter will grow up to the same value, 20% in a year, no matter how much fight do I stake on them. That is an absolute excellent question, and we had an endless discussion about that internally as well. So if 
we were to say that everybody could stake any amount of fight inside of their fighter and evolve at the same rate as everybody would did, that would mean that nobody would evolve the fighter or everybody would evolve their fighter because it just costs the same. So what we have introduced within the NFT is basically a tier system. So if you're staking 250 fight inside of your fighter, and this also applies to the L people because we have two different staking rewards. So, but the math is 250 fight staked inside of the fighter for one year means that you're evolving at 1% over the course of a year. That means you need to stake a full 5,000 fight inside of your fighter to reach the maximum, which is 20% evolution and statistical value over the course of a year. Now, the same obviously needs to apply to the LP because people can stick fight and the LP version of fight. I did the math today, and I think it is around, don't quote me on this, it's about 20 LP tokens per 1% increase in statistical value over the course of the year. Okay, well, I hope that answers your question there, Yuchi. And uh, if you can send a message, I guess, to either myself or Zach afterwards, and we will sort you out with a thousand fight. Um, for everybody else, I know we said that the three top questions will be picked and you will all each get 50 BUSD. Please give us a little bit of time. I will go through the questions we have asked. Don't worry if I have asked your question in this video. I have logged it down and we'll discuss amongst the team which we think are the best three questions. We will then contact you if you can then give us your details and we'll ensure you get this money. It may not be today as it is coming on to <laughs> 11 o'clock at night for myself. And I do require some sleep, so it is likely to be announced tomorrow. So uh, before you offer any more rewards there, Felix, do you have any <laughs> last words this time? <laughs> I, I am very good. I'm excited, guys. Uh, 26th of December, market calendars. It's going to be a big day. Um, get your NFT, start staking, and do look forward for releasing all of that and the minigames as well next year. Fantastic. Well... Awesome to have you here again, Felix. Like I said, everybody, hopefully we're going to do this as a weekly thing. If you want us to do that, let us know on any of our social medias. Make sure you go over to YouTube as we've got a lot of information there that is in a video form, also AMAs as well. So you can gain information without having to do all the reading. But I would recommend that you do any reading on our project for yourself as well, as you need to remember to do your own research. Uh, so we have all of our white paper, all these documents and blogs are on our site itself. We also have Hacken that has published the audit of our six contracts as well, which you spoke about at the start of this question time. So, guys, that is all we've got time for today. Thank you, anybody that has come along. Let us know as well if Telegram is your preferred method to listen to us do this. We do have other platforms we could run this on, but we feel Telegram might have been the best. So until next, everybody, it's a goodbye from me and Felix. Thank you, George. Always a pleasure.